To move through the battlefront areas of Misrata, you have to make your way among backyards, alleyways, and broken homes. It's never exactly clear where the lines are, where Qaddafi snipers are hiding. Young men with small arms and no real training against an enemy with heavy weapons. As dire as things are here, the rebels are winning merely by hanging on. No one here expects Qaddafi's forces to show any mercy if they take control of this city, which means surrender is not an option. It's win or die. And dying is easy to do here. The main hospital has been evacuated. Triage is now done in a tent in the grounds of a private one in a slightly safer area. The wounded come in on a regular basis, victims of gunshots, shelling and rocket fire. The few remaining doctors are stretched to the limit. What do you need most? We need more peace. <laughs> That's what we need. But we need, yes, more. We need uh, bigger space, more facility, more stuff. All, all kinds of stuff we are missing, actually. Drugs. Some parts of the city actually seem more or less normal. Until you remember, these kids are risking random shelling. There's even a kind of rush hour. But looks are deceptive. The lines at the few gas stations still open stretch for half a block. Small markets still operate, but the selection is limited. Life has been reduced to the basics. Really, we have a very bad uh, situation about uh, bread and uh, uh, water, dirty water and uh, electrolyte. No one is quite sure how many people are left here, but conventional wisdom puts it at about 300,000, half the peacetime population. And amazingly, there is no rush to get out. Basim Asriti risks the streets to give journalists free rides. I want the world to see the massacres Gaddafi has been doing, Basim says. He has been killing women and children. Cut off on three sides, the only sure way out of the city is on a stretcher. Seriously wounded victims who are stable enough to travel are sent to Benghazi on a ferry evacuating migrant workers. But the emergency clinic in the cabin area can only handle about 50 patients per trip. In a place where the front lines are a few hundred yards apart, the quota is easily filled. Alan Pizzi joins us now from Benghazi after a long boat ride from Misrata. Alan, your boat, I know, transported the bodies of those two American journalists who were killed in Libya yesterday. Yes, it did, Katie. The sailing was delayed so the bodies could be brought aboard, and one of our security men, an ex-British military officer, went down to ensure that they were given a measure of dignity and respect when they came aboard. We're all aware that for journalists who cover conflicts, luck is a blind trust fund. You can make withdrawals, but there are no deposits, and you never know how much is left. Tim and Chris has ran out while they were doing something that they loved doing, that they wanted to do, and that they felt was essential. They just got unlucky. Katie? Alan Pizzi, Alan, thank you.